Yellowstone supervolcano earthquake swarms challenge USGS scientists. Kalamhor Express UK reports Yellowstone supervolcano scientists face a particular challenge when they're trying to monitor earthquake activity in the area. This is what USGS revealed. Yellowstone volcano gets its chilling label as a supervolcano because of its ability to inflict devastation worldwide. It's not just that it's a danger to the United States. All this volcanic ash, sulfuric cloud, will the sulfur uh, particles in the air will be traveling worldwide. Now pinned between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, the volcano is constantly monitored by the USGS for signs that the super eruption may be on its way. And now we know that the Yellowstone supervolcano is a new uh, observatory, it has a new observatory there. It was basically established in 2001 after a 2000 documentary came out by the BBC uh, pointing out how dangerous the supervolcano actually is. It motivated the US government to establish the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there. So basically it's been there for the past 18, 19 years and they have a lot of work to do because it has over 60 percent of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal spots there and new ones always being uh, found. Now it's just between, it's on Wyoming, uh, Montana, Idaho area the volcano is monitored by USGS for science that a major eruption may be on its way, who knows? One of the ways scientists carry out research inside Yellowstone is, and the surrounding areas is through analyzing the earthquakes that occur in the area. They have uh, GPS and mon earthquake monitors. Seismic activity is recorded in the region with the majority of the tremors being measured below a 3.5 magnitude, meaning that they are too faint to be felt by most, by most people. The USGS website reveals that the Yellowstone region is one of the most seismically active areas in the United States, and it experiences anywhere between 1,500 to 2,500 uh, local, local earthquakes per year on average. This is what's reported. What's recorded it could be even more. Now, the majority of these earthquakes are too small to be felt by humans, but are detected by the sophisticated network of about 50 seismometers called the Yellowstone Seismic Network, YSN. The University of Utah also has the responsibility of monitoring Yellowstone. It operates the YSN, and earthquake data are transferred from Yellowstone to the UUSS, University of Utah seismic stations in real time using a radio and a satellite telemetry system. The UUSS scientists analyze the earthquake data and report information on their website, but the USGS always detailed why the cold temperatures of the Elsa region mean that sometimes the seismographs freeze and they don't perform properly. He added, it's challenging to keep data flowing during harsh winter months because many of the transmission sites are on tall peaks that experience heavy snowfall and frigid temperatures. Seismometers sometimes go down for short periods of time because the solar panels or antennas get covered in snow and ice. Seismometers that go down during the winter may not be accessible until the spring. We saw that the uh, Team started going out as of uh, basically the beginning, the first few days of May. They went up to the Steamboat Geyser, Norris Geyser Basin, to uh, install various monitors. As we said, Steamboat Geyser area didn't have a thermal monitor, and they showed pictures of the teams up there actually digging through four and a half feet of snow in order to place the uh, monitors in there. So you can imagine. Now, they, they still may have snow up there because it's very high up in altitude. Um, instead of four and a half feet, maybe they have two feet or one foot of snow, but still, it's a lot. Now, um, so this poses concern to scientists because of the high probability of 
sparking an earthquake swarm. Uh, these pose a threat as they can trigger volcanic eruptions. As we know, we're talking about the swarms. They can trigger volcanic eruptions, even though scientists are unsure exactly how. Well, um, they believe that the volcanic activity possibly occurs in response to a change in the local pressure surrounding the magma, the magma reservoir system uh, as a consequence of severe ground shaking, of course, caused by earthquakes. USGS site states earthquake swarms, earthquakes that cluster in times and space, account for about 50% of the total seismicity in Yellowstone and can occur anywhere in the Yellowstone region, but they are most common in the east-west band of seismicity between Hebgen Lake and the Norris Geyser Basin. Most earthquake swarms are small, containing 10 to 20 earthquakes and short, lasting for one to two days, but there are large swarms that can contain thousands of earthquakes and can last for months and they do occur on occasion. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.